Hello everyone, Mrs. Fondre here. Today we're going to be talking and learning all about Vincent van Gogh. Now maybe you've heard that name before because he's probably one of the most famous artists ever to have lived. So it's about time we talk about him in art class, all right? Um, we're going to learn a little bit about his life. We're going to look at some of his, pro his work and make a project based on some of his art, okay? So let me share my screen so we can get started. It's kind of fun because I have two computers going right now. All right, so um, Vincent van Gogh, we click to my first slide. Um, this is a self-portrait, so he painted himself and he's really famous for those swirly whirly kind of lines. So maybe you recognize some of his stuff when we see it. So a little bit about Vincent van Gogh. He was born in 1853 and he lived until 1890, so he was only 37 years old when he passed away. He's from the Netherlands, which is an area in Europe across the ocean from us, and in less than 10 years, he painted almost 900 paintings. That's a lot of paintings for a decade, so he went pretty fast while he was working. Um, I think something even more interesting than all those paintings is that he also wrote almost eight hundred letters. I know nowadays people can just call each other or they could send a text message or an email, but back in the 1800s you had to write letters and he wrote letters all the time to his brother and his best friend, potentially his only friend, Theo, his brother Theo. Um, the sad part about him, his life, is that he only sold one painting in his entire life and nowadays people love his work. Um, one of the reasons why he only sold one painting is that he didn't really have a good time getting along with other people. Um, he's known for not having many friends and he usually kind of lived and stayed on his own. And one of the most famous things he's actually well known for is that he cut off part of or his entire ear. Um, we'll talk about that in just a little bit because I know everyone always has questions about that. but. Um, a lot of his most famous work that he did was while he was in an asylum to help hopefully get him me mentally a little healthier. So he checked himself into an asylum and he did lots of paintings. And some of his most famous paintings in the world were created while he was trying to help himself. All right. And he's known as a post-impressionist artist. So what's post-impressionism? Great question. Glad you asked. Um, if you remember last year, we talked about an artist named Claude Monet. Um, he was really famous for painting haystacks and lily pads and had really, really fast paintings as well. So you can see I have two images here. I have um, Claude Monet's Impression Sunrise, which we looked at last year. And then I have a painting by Vincent van Gogh of similar things. They're, um, they're uh, scenes above water, okay? And you can see that they're similar because they use really kind of brighter colors. You can see that pop of orange in the sun for Claude Monet, and you can see those bright stars in, in uh, Vincent van Gogh's. And they really slapped the paint on. They used really thick paint when they went. They didn't care if it was really delicate or easy. They just put it on the canvas. They were painting like crazy people, which is really cool to see. And they usually painted really realistic things, like they would paint landscapes like both of these paintings are or they would paint a vase full of flowers or they would paint a building so realistic things so that's how these two styles are similar um, but post-impressionism which is what Vincent van Gogh did post-impressionism um, they are more about making things look more geometric so that would be using straighter lines or doing really curvy things all right versus more realistic proportions like instead of having a head shape it might be more stretched out head shape or full pulled apart face um and they did this kind of stretching and pulling of um of these objects to kind of make it look a little bit more expressive so it looks a little bit more interesting and it's able to show off how it's feeling a little bit more it's kind of when you're expressing your feelings the whole post impressionism was starting to express themselves more and there's actually a style of art that we're going to hopefully talk about later in the year called expressionism which follows this one so paintings get even more stretched out and emotional after a while all right and another thing that's a little different from post-impressionism is the fact that they used unnatural 
or arbitrary color. So not realistic necessarily, all right? We know that the stars in the sky are little tiny blips of white, but you can even see in uh, Van Gogh's painting right here that they look like they're glowing and they're big and they're yellow. So they made them a little bit more not realistic, all right? Because um, Impressionism was all about getting a natural, um, natural lighting as it was in the day, but then post-impressionism was like, nah, let's not do it as realistic. All right, so it gets a little, a little more creative here. All right, so let's get into uh, Van Gogh's little mental health for you today. Okay, so back in December 23rd of 1888, um, that was the day that Van Gogh cut off part of his ear. They can't we don't know for sure if it was his entire ear or part of an ear. The records kind of are conflicting on that. But during that moment, he was having a really heated argument with another artist named Paul Gauguin, which is actually another artist we talked about last year as well. So he was having a really, really rough time, a really big argument. Um, and he was actually having kind of a mental breakdown where he was, he was not healthy in his mind. So... Um, he later, like I said, checked himself into an asylum to help hopefully get him in the right track to feeling a little healthier in the mind, thinking more positively, um, being better to himself, right? Um, and they, he even said on the record that he didn't remember doing it. He like was in such a emotional state, he didn't remember cutting part of his ear or his ear off. So he didn't even remember that. Um, and a reason why they think Van Gogh might have done that is because he actually had a problem with his brain. Um, they kind of did some research on um, all of his symptoms and things he talked about, and the doctors today think he would have been um, would have been diagnosed with a temporal lobe epilepsy, which is essentially meaning in his brain he was born with a clump that was not quite right, and it affected the way he thought and the way he saw and the way he interacted with people. So he was not born with a healthy, normal functioning brain. And that's why he had a hard time making friends. And he didn't really have anyone to emotionally support him in his life. He had his best friend, his brother Theo, that would help him out a lot. But Theo lived far away and he didn't have people close by that could care about him. So um, I just wanna take a little quick time out to say, if you ever feel like you need a team or a support person to be there for you, always know that Mrs. Fondre is there for you because I care about you and I want you to be the best, healthiest young person you can be, all right? So if you ever need someone, I'm totally there for you. I'm sure a lot of your family is there, your friends, your teachers. You, we, you got a team. You got someone you can count on, okay? Um, so like I said, Van Gogh didn't really have that. And actually a few years after this ear incident, he, um, he was shot and he died of an infection. And some people think he shot himself and some people thought he was accidentally shot while he was out painting. Um, they never found a weapon, so we really can't confirm or deny how or what happened, but he, he passed away from a gunshot wound, which is kind of sad. So he lived kind of a sad life. He just wanted to paint these beautiful, colorful things in this kind of dark mind that he had. He was really kind of, he was troubled and he wanted to make it better through his paintings, but wasn't really appreciated during his time. And now we look back and think, wow, he made some amazing things. And here are just a few of his beautiful, beautiful paintings that he made. And a lot of these were actually made while he was in his asylum trying to work on his mental health. So you can see all of them have a lot of things in common with the short little brush strokes and the swirls and they just are bright colors. So for someone that was pretty sad and kind of on his own all the time, he tried to capture some joy and some light in his work, which is, I think, probably was good for him to do. All right. So uh, the one painting that I know you probably recognize, one of the world famous paintings from Van Gogh, is this beautiful one. And it's called A Starry Night. All right. Um, it's kind of interesting that this painting is only two by three feet big. So it's maybe about this big, not super ginormous, okay? But um, but it was actually donated to the New York Museum. So you can go see it if you go to New York. And a lot of people think that this is his most expensive painting that ever was created that someone bought later after he passed away, but that is not actually true. I want to show you the painting that was the most expensive that was sold from Vincent van Gogh. 
and it is a portrait of his doctor, portrait of Dr. Gashith from 1890. Um, and it sold in 1990 for $82.5 million. And if you do the math with what, how much the dollar is worth today, that's closer to $161 million and 400,000. I said that in the wrong order, but um, it's worth almost double that amount today, which is pretty crazy. All right. So um, with that being said, um, that's a little bit about Van Gogh and kind of his story. And hopefully we can learn a little bit about it with um, appreciating the things around you and finding those people in your life to be your support team. All right. And maybe the fact that making art is a good way to express yourself and to Kind of keep yourself healthy mentally too all right so um if your questions comments you want to talk more about van gogh please feel free to comment below or to um send me an email i'd love to chat more with you about van gogh but as for now i'm going to stop the video here and i'm going to actually talk to you about what your project is going to be all right second grade are you ready for your project Today, our project is going to be based on Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. Now, if you can't quite remember what that looks like from the presentation, you could rewind a little ways back in the presentation, or I could just show you, all right? Um, I'll pull up a tab here just to refresh our memory, all right? Uh, Starry Night is probably one of the most famous pieces of artwork in the entire world, so I think it's good if you really look at this and try to Put it in your memory because you'll probably see it again in your future could be tomorrow could be years from now but this famous starry night is something you'll probably look at again whether it's with me or whomever you're with all right so for your project today you're going to be making something inspired by starry night like i said and it's going to look a little something like this okay um at home you're going to need a few different things if you have a uh, colored paper that is blue and black, that would be the most helpful today. However, if you just have a white paper, you could very easily cut it in half to make it about this size and just use a white piece of paper from here. I'm gonna pretend for my lesson today that you have white paper because hopefully we'd at least have that. And you're gonna want colored pencils or uh, colored pencils. You wanna want oil pastels or crayons. Um, oil pastels are just uh, um, a little stickier versions of crayons that usually have brighter colors. That's why I kind of choose those a lot more in art. Um, I know if you have art kits at home, you might already have those in there. Otherwise, crayons would work just fine. And the last thing that you're going to want is a scissors. Uh, you won't need a scissors if you don't have black paper because for what we're doing in class, we're going to actually be cutting out buildings and gluing it to a black piece of paper. All right, I glued it a little off so you could see that it's two different pieces of paper. However, if you don't have black paper, we could just color those in with a black crayon or color or oil pastel or color pencil or whatever you have at home. All right, if you really don't have any of those things then you might have markers, markers would work too. All right, so let me move this down so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so if you only have a white piece of paper, it's gonna be helpful if you actually make it blue first. So um, you don't have to do it solid blue because we're going to be doing some mixing inside of it as well. So let me get mine over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So if you have a blue crayon or oil pastel, just slightly start to color your whole, all right? It just helps to get a base coat of color down because this painting is mostly blue. So if we can get your paper a little more blue, gonna look a little bit more like that painting all right try to make sure you get to the edges and if you ever use oil pastel this is actually gonna be really helpful because it's gonna help mix your colors even more all right so it's not perfectly blue but it gives us a good start all right from here if you have lots of different color blues you're gonna want to get them out I like to use um, darker blues I like to use kind of greenish uh, greenish blues. I like to use some sky blues. I even have like a normal like baby like like normal primary color blue. 
Um, and you're also going to want white because we're going to be doing some swirlies with those colors. And you're also going to be wanting some yellow for these stars. So I have a lot of yellows in my box, but if you just have a yellow and a white, that will do the job. All right. So I'm going to start with my, my stars and moon first. So I have them on my paper. All right. So I'm going to just put a nice crescent moon on the top here. Kind of looks like a letter C. And I'm going to actually fill mine in a little bit. And like I said, if you have oil pastel, it's going to mix in and that's all right. Um, if you have other colors of yellow, you can kind of add those in too. I love mixing colors. Um, and you're going to have to put some dots, some circles in the sky for your stars. All right. I originally in my uh, example over here, tried to copy exactly where the stars are, but you know, it's okay. As long as you're lighting up that sky with those little dots, that's all right. Um, from here, the cool thing about Vincent Van Gogh is that he used lots of swirls and blending of color. So when you go back in here, you're going to grab your yellows and your whites and kind of draw circles and curvy lines around it. So I'm going to grab my white and I'm going to kind of just do like curved kind of circle lines all over the place. And like I said, if you have oil pastel, it's going to mix up a little bit. Okay. It's kind of hard to see the white at first, but when I get some of my other yellows in here, it'll hopefully make it blend a little bit easier, right? I'm kind of just doing these glowing lines. I'm not going super slow. I'm going kind of quick because Van Gogh was a pretty fast painter. He did paint 900 paintings in 10 years. So that's about a painting a week, which that's pretty fast if you think about with other artists. Okay, maybe I'll do some of my other yellow and the more like brighter colors you got, go for it. Right? And they just kind of make this really cool glowing effect when you do all these circles around it. Okay. Now, from here, let me get my, my other example right in front of you here. We're going to get some of these really big swirlies happening. Okay. It's kind of like the letter S that goes through here, or maybe some letter E's that go flowing around here. So um, from here, I'm going to try to find my a lighter blue if you have one. Um, if you only have a blue blue, I guess we're going to make it work from there. And from here, I'm going to kind of just draw a big letter S that goes around here. Okay, it looks like an S from my angle. So um, a swirly letter S. I'm going to add a lot more swirly, swirly lines in here. Okay, it's okay if they get a little mixed together. It's a little, little all over the place here because we're doing swirls. All right, and I'm going to even add some extra kind of little little lines that kind of flow around stars too okay around there and it makes it look like it's glowing and flowing all over the place all right go grab another one let's grab some more i'm gonna draw some more lines through here all right um it's all these little fun swirly little lines i'm not too worried about the bottom of my drawing right now because i'm going to be drawing houses over the top of them so i'm okay if i leave some areas a little more empty at the bottom but i do still want to fill something up over there all right um now like i said the more colors you have the more crazy little lines you can put in here um once i get into darker blues i try to leave this big swirly one lighter so it stands out so i'm going to kind of go around my swirls now because i want those to stand out you see how just adding some swirls around the swirls make it pop yeah the little dashed lines here kind of all flows together it looks like water almost a little bit it's very wavy okay and again i'm going in those circle motions around the stars and just you're slowly building this up Right? It wasn't done in a day. You had to take some time and add all these little tiny lines. Da, da, da. You know, and I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking where I'm at right now. Okay. So, um, you know, you could even add some white in here too. I like doing white in the swirl so it's popped even more. Yeah. That. All right. So from here, if you have this black paper that you could um, cut out areas in your drawing, you could do that. However, if you don't have black paper to put behind it, so you can see those holes, we're gonna just draw in houses, all right? As I kind of did experiments with mine, I ended up liking the house shape a little bit more than the skyscraper. So I'm just gonna do houses this time. If you could do at least like three 
houses, that would be probably good. Um, you're going to want a black for this. And a uh, house shape is pretty straightforward. You draw a square, and you have a little triangle on top. And then from here, you color it all in. All right. But like I said, if you do have black paper, you could just draw this outline and you could cut it out because you could put your black paper behind and do a little practice with our cutting too. All right. So, like I said, probably three houses would make it look the best at the bottom. All right. So, um, that's all I have for you today for this drawing Vincent Van Gogh project. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'd love to help you out. All right. Uh, I can't wait to see what you've uh, what you've come up with. Please uh, turn in your drawings onto the Seesaw app or the Google Classroom. I know I have Google for some and I have Seesaw for the others. So um, if you could upload them wherever you've seen this video posted, that would be great. All right. Um, happy creating. We'll talk to you next time.